Okay. All right, no worries. Well, I'm going to introduce you to uh, Jenna. Um, I don't have your blurb in front of me, so I'm using my memory and you can fill in the gaps that I miss. But Jenna, to me, she is an amazing slow fashion expert. And we were talking about slow fashion um, the other day. Um, slow fashion is quite different to fast fashion and it's very different to, to fast food as well too. It's really about valuing the clothes that you have. Uh, but I'm going to hand it over to Jenna who's going to say a bit more. <laughs> Thank you, Kirstie. Hi, everyone. So I am Jenna. I am a slow fashion stylist. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about sort of how you can be a slow fashion advocate and what we can do while we are home. Um, I'm just waiting for my slides to appear. I think we are appearing soon. But basically, um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about maybe some different options you haven't thought about of what sort of is a slow fashion here we go. So I wanted to talk a little bit about how to be a slow fashion advocate and maybe some options you hadn't thought about what falls under the slow fashion umbrella. So obviously, obviously I know what fast fashion is, but I'm going to talk a little bit about that. But I also, before I begin, I want you all to think about your wardrobes and what you sort of really want from your wardrobes. Maybe there is something that's not quite working with you in your wardrobe and you're not quite sure what it is, or maybe it's time for a declutter. Or maybe there's items in there that you really love, but they just need a little bit of love, a little bit of mending. Maybe they even need a good wash. Who knows? I know that's the case in my wardrobe for sure. <laughs> so can we get the next slide, please? Thank you. So a little bit about what is fast fashion. It's obviously a lot of clothing. So for example, say you go to a shop and there's piles and piles and piles of clothing, you know, all piled up jeans, 20 to a table. That's usually fast fashion. And why? Because it's produced en masse. So these items are produced extremely fast, um, usually with no concerns for the people who make them, and also using up a lot of our resources. So they're usually made from polyester um, or cotton or even viscose. So they're not the best fabrics to use for our clothing. Cotton's not too bad, but when it's produced on mass, it's not a great fabric to use. So you can sort of really see from the words I've got on the screen here that it's not the best thing to buy when you're looking at buying something for your wardrobe. It's usually, you know, thoughtless or rushed and it's something you really don't think about that you really want to put in your wardrobe. It's kind of like, it's basically is fast food. Like, you know, when you're really hungry and you want to grab something to eat, and you're like, no, I don't want the apple. I don't want the good thing. So you grab the bad thing. Fast fashion is kind of like that in a way. Can we go to the next slide, please? Thank you. So slow fashion is obviously a lot more considered. It's usually made from organic fabrics or natural fibers or dead stock or dead stock fabrics. And it usually has certifications like GOTS, which is Global Organic Textile Standard, which means everything, I think, from the growing of the seed right through to the manufacturing of the fabric is um, all organic and all, all the workers are treated fairly and all the dyes or anything that you use, use, like the electricity and water is all circular as well. It also has inclusive sizing. Um, it's a little bit trickier for some people to shop slow fashion, but I really think slow fashion should have inclusive sizing. So from anywhere in the size range, right up to any size for anyone who wants to wear slow fashion. With fast fashion, they are sometimes more inclusive, which means some people let, go towards fast fashion because that's what they can wear and like that's not bad if you need clothing you need to wear something that fits you don't you so you will buy that and if you treat it well then there's no problem with that but I think with slow fashion it's not just about buying items there's a lot more that's with slow fashion and that's what I want to dig deep in today so I think when people sort of talk about sustainable fashion or ethical fashion it's always about oh you have to buy from the best brand or you have to buy this or you have to buy that but not everyone wants to buy things they want to have a really nice wardrobe full of, full of things that tell a story or things they love and things they wear that they feel really good in. So I really think that's what slow fashion is, not just buying something new or even buying something secondhand. It's not always slow fashion. Again, slow fashion is very transparent. So there's a lot of brands out there, maybe like Lois Hazel or ABCH, that really dedicate their time to creating a system that is showing you how the garment was made right from the beginning right to the end. So they're detailing where the cotton comes from, even where the seed is growing. They're detailing all the way to the um, mills where the cotton is made and they're detailing where it's made and where it's shipped to and then who made the garment for you. 
which I think is really nice because, again, the garment tells a bit of a story. I don't want to spend too much time on this. I want to let you sort of read the words and let them sort of hit you how they feel they need to hit you. So can I go to the next slide, please? So if anyone's watched War and Waste, which I think is a few years old now, which really sort of shocks me. Time's going so fast. But you would be familiar with this picture. And I I mean, when I saw War and Waste, this picture really shocked me. And it's Craig Rucastle standing on a huge pile of clothing. I think it was the Sydney Mall. And every time I look at this picture, I get equally shocked again because I also sometimes feel that I am responsible for some of this, especially in my youth when I did not know much about slow fashion or fast fashion, any sort of fashion. I had limited options to buy things, so I bought stuff. I had a disposable income, so I bought stuff. I didn't really care where it went after I'd finished with it. I sometimes just wore it once, and then if it ripped, I didn't bother fixing it. I wasn't taught about any of this stuff, so that's why I'm a slow fashion stylist today, to sort of teach people more about ways they can embrace slow fashion or sustainable fashion, secondhand fashion. So how many kilograms of clothing is sent to landfill every 10 minutes in Australia? Does anyone want to sort of make a little comment and guess this one before I go to the next slide? No? Can we go to the next slide, please? I think that's a lot of clothing. If you think about it, every 10 minutes that is going to landfill somewhere in Australia. Someone said 30 jumpers worth. Yeah, probably. So definitely 30 jumpers in there. And I think what was really good about this segment is that Craig actually asked people the same question when they were walking past. Um, and people were like, oh, I don't know how much this goes to landfill. This takes an hour to go to landfill. This takes two days to go to landfill. So people didn't know that it only takes 10 minutes for this amount of clothing to go to landfill. And it may not, you know, it could be textiles as well. So, you know, maybe a couch cover or, you know, a dog bed or something. It's not just from our wardrobe. It's textile waste as well. So I think what I'm trying to get at here is when people think about clothing waste, sometimes they just think about like, you know, a sock they threw in the bin because they had enough, they couldn't mend it or they couldn't fix it or they didn't know where to send it for textile recycling. But when you think more and more about all the socks you threw in the bin and then all the socks that everyone else threw in the bin, it starts to look a little bit like this. Now, I mean, it's a little bit scary to place the blame on us and I'm not placing the blame on us, but I do think we need to be more cautious of where we buy our clothing from and also what we do with it once we're sort of finished with it and maybe how we can care for it during its lifetime. So can I go to the next slide, please? Okay, some more scary stats. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I really do think that some people are more visual and some people like to read words and then that's where the stats really hit you. So for me, like, you know, just like, on average, just 4% of the price of a piece of clothing sold in Australia goes towards workers' wages in garment factories. 4%, that's not much at all. Like, it's hardly anything when you think about what they're putting into these garments. Like, if you've ever tried to make a jacket, it's hard. I tried and I failed. I gave up. I made a skirt once and it was wonky and it was a tube skirt. I don't know how I can stuff that up, but I managed to. So I really, really thank the people who actually make our clothing and that's why I want my clothing to be made by someone who cares or I want my clothing to be secondhand because then I'm reducing the amount of textiles that will go to waste. I'm using what's already there. So I sort of want you to read these sort of stats and really think about how your wardrobe represents them or maybe how you can sort of change your ways a little bit or how even if you don't shop fast fashion or you don't shop at all, that's totally fine. Maybe you can help someone else. Can you sort of slip these into a little Zoom conversation in the future? Can you sort of maybe help someone who's a little bit younger than you pick out their next outfit from the op shop instead of going to a fast fashion store. I just really want you to think about the ways your purchasing habits affect your wardrobes, but how you can also pass on this information you've learned. Next slide, please. So this is the hierarchy of needs. And I've got the little, um, where I found the image from, Sarah, I cannot say that last thing, but she's on Instagram. And this is where I sort of got this image from. And I really like it because it sort of talks about a nice sustainable way to build your wardrobe and to, to basically participate in fashion. Now, when I first started being a slow fashion stylist, I bought a lot of stuff. 
because I thought that's what I had to do. I thought I had to have a sustainable wardrobe and buy all this stuff to make it sustainable, get rid of all my old fast fashion stuff. I used to work in um, at Cotton On and two other fast fashion stores. So I had a lot of clothing. I mean, you get discounts, so why wouldn't you buy it? I didn't know back then. So I had a lot of clothes and I was like, oh, yeah, I have to get rid of it all. I have to be, you know, a slow fashion style. I just have to represent what these, what I'm telling people to do. So I got rid of it all. And I probably didn't get rid of it in the best way, but I was still learning back then. And now I'm very proud of the wardrobe I have, but I know that I probably could have done it a little bit slower. I guess I just got excited. But I want to talk through this little hierarchy of needs triangle today. And we'll start at the bottom and work our way up and just sort of talk about the ways we can do it within our wardrobe. I mean, you don't have to just buy, maybe you can't make clothing like I can't make clothing. And maybe, you know, swapping's a little bit off the cards at the moment. There's no sort of swap parties we can go to. But there are ways you can sort of do these things. And definitely we can start mending our clothing while we're in lockdown as well. Um, I've sort of already mended a few of my items. I got a jumpsuit that was sort of too, I didn't like the bow on the front. So I sort of removed the bow and put a little snap lock. And now I'm really excited to wear it once the weather warms up. So I just sort of, sort of want you to apply these, I guess, words to what your wardrobe is. Next slide, please. So use what you have. That's obvious, isn't it? Use what you have. Also, I want you to use what you have, but I also want you to get rid of some stuff. So I know that sounds a little bit weird, but when you have a wardrobe full of stuff you no longer wear, it's a little bit daunting. So you start looking for clothing and you're like, oh, I don't like this. This one no longer fits. Oh, this is a terrible waist. This is too short. Oh, I hate it all. And then you just close the door and go back to bed, basically. You get frustrated because your clothing is full of, your wardrobe is full of clutter. So I think the best way to really have a nice clear wardrobe is to get rid of a little bit. And don't throw it in the bin. It can still be used. You can definitely, you know, mend something into something else. I think Tamara will help you a little bit more with that, with the mending side of things. And definitely the upcycling or downcycling. She is a genius. So also with using what you have, can you mend something? I mended a pair of pants so they fit a little bit better on my waist because I didn't want to buy them new. I had... A pair of pants came into work where I work in a consignment store and I really love them, but they were too tight in the waist. And I was like, I know this brand, but I don't want to buy from this brand. I really don't want to support them. I've got these pants here now. Can I maybe alter the waist? So I asked around and I asked a few Mendy friends and they're like, yeah, you can sure do it. So I did it. It didn't look that great, but I didn't care. I got to wear the pants that I liked. And then I think, I guess my weight changed and I could actually sew the holes back up. So I had you know, a pair of pants I could wear and love instead of just going to the shop and buying the next size up. I sort of utilised what I already had, which made me feel really happy anyway. And then, you know, mending as simple as, you know, popping on a button on something or even putting a button in a different spot so it does fit a little bit better. I'm trying to think about what else I've mended. Oh, nothing comes to mind right now, but I'm sure I've mended a lot of things. Oh, I mended my partner's pants. He always gets holes in his pants. So I always just mend them and they're just home pants. So it doesn't matter what they look like. He loves them. And upcycling or downcycling. So I think there was a phase a few years ago where we all made our T-shirts in the bags, which is really cool. You'd have like, you know, the fringing at the bottom and the um, armholes with the handles. And I think that's a really cool idea. And you can definitely apply it to like lots of other things. I read in a book today, I was reading, it said you can use a single sock for dusting. I thought that was a really cool idea. Just like one little sock you put your hand in and dust along little ledges that need dusting because you can wash it and then just keep reusing it. Um, downcycling. I actually found a cat toy today that I made. I had a piece of um, linen that I cut in half and stuffed full of plastic so it crinkled and then I put some little tassel -y things on the end that I just found out of my sewing box. And I'm going to say my cats didn't like it. But I still, I felt really proud that I made this little cat toy for my cats. So I think about what, if what you've got in your wardrobe isn't serving you and it's a little bit too old to pass on to a friend, then maybe think about upcycling or downcycling. Make a dog bed or you can make, I think I've seen a sock as a tea holder cozy for your little takeaway cup. There's so many ideas. I think once you think about it and start exploring, you can really find some good ones. And then something we can all do while we're in lockdown is shop your own wardrobe. So is there something in there that you haven't worn in ages? Then maybe you can try it and create some outfits around it. And then if you create some really good outfits, take some photos for like personal use later. So you'd be like, I made this outfit from things I already own and I feel proud and I'm going to re-wear re it because it makes me feel good. 
Another two things that I sort of found work really well for me are capsule wardrobes and smaller wardrobes. So this is my wardrobe behind me, you can see it. And it is, I think, less than 50 pieces when I, and I remember a time where I had over 150 pieces and I could never get dressed because I felt like I had too much and it sort of suffocated me. So with smaller wardrobes and capsule wardrobes, they're a little bit different, but a capsule is basically like kind of a uniform you wear all the time. So maybe you love wearing white t-shirts and black pants. That's your uniform and your capsule wardrobe. You just have pieces in there that you love and serve a purpose. With the smaller wardrobes, it's a little bit the same, but it's not following a strict guideline. Can I please go to the next slide? So this is a capsule wardrobe that I sort of created for myself. I don't follow it. Um, I'm not that strict, but I just wanted to see if it was something that could be done. And it definitely can be done. It's not restrictive at all. There are people that sort of live with a little capsule wardrobe very similar to this. I mean, you don't have to, you know, if you don't wear thongs, then don't have a thong. I mean, the shoe one. Don't have a thong on in your wardrobe. And if there's, you don't wear blazers, don't have a blazer in your wardrobe. Substitute it for something else. Maybe you like to wear denim jackets more, so have two denim jackets. Simple as that. It's all about creating a creating a curated section, selection of clothing you love. And I just find it's less stress and decision fatigue on yourself. So, I mean, sometimes we have enough to worry about than getting dressed. So when you can grab two items from your wardrobe that work perfectly together, why not? Next slide, please. And I think a capsule wardrobe, if you're curious, does work best with a sort of a color palette. So you've got your main colors. So my main colors are basically all black and white. And then I have some neutrals that sort of tie back into the black and white theme and they work really well. And then if I wanted to introduce some color into my wardrobe, like some bright colors, I could have some hot pink or maybe some baby blue and that would really tie it all together. And these sort of accent shades you can introduce with maybe a scarf or a necklace. If you don't want to buy a bright pink coat, don't buy a bright pink coat. But if you love a bright pink coat, then buy a bright pink coat. It's all about doing what you love. People think a capsule wardrobe is just like mine. It's all black and white and tan. It's not really, it's the colors that you love. You just gotta find out how they work together. Next slide, please. So I wanna pause a little bit here before I go too deep and I'm just not just talking at you. So we've all sort of talked a little bit about the triangle um, and I'm hoping that you're all sort of thinking about ways that your wardrobe can work for you. Is there something you're missing from your wardrobe? Maybe you have a lot of pants, but no tops to go with them. Maybe you can invest in a plain white t-shirt or maybe another colored t-shirt. I think just for an example for me, I'm always searching for the right piece. So I start buying too much. I work in a clothing store, so I have clothing around me all the time. But lately I realized that I need to stop searching for the right piece and embrace what I already own. So what I started to do was look at the clothing I already owned and then started to alter it. So I got a pair of pants altered in the waist so they fit better. And now I wear them all the time. I altered my jumpsuit so it fits a bit better. I got something ready to alter so it fits me better as well. I want to love the pieces I already have rather than spending time and trying to search for the next one. I want to spend that time, you know, patting my cats or cooking great meals or reading books or watching movies. I don't want to be constantly chasing this perfect piece I have to have in my wardrobe. So I really encourage you to think about the clothes you already own and love them in the way that they are already. Sure, there's going to be pieces that do not fit you at all or, you know, they're worn in the thighs or they're stained a different colour. But maybe you could dye that T-shirt or maybe that um, pair of jeans with the hole in the thighs could become a bag or maybe you could make a cool jacket for your cat that your cat doesn't like to wear because I've done that and it did not like to wear a denim jacket. But anyway, I've got a few questions that I might like to answer if that's possible. Um, can we please, just gonna read these questions. Someone says, I've been thinking about a capsule wardrobe, but how often do you need to buy new clothes? Depends how long, how fast you wear them and how hard you wear them. I think um, there's a really good book. I think it's by Kate Flanders. I think she talks about a capsule wardrobe in that book, or maybe it's another person. No, Project 333. Yes, that's the book, I'm pretty sure. And she talks about having a capsule wardrobe and what to do when clothes run out. But I think with our mindset now, I still have the same mindset, like today my laptop died somehow and I thought I had to get a new laptop and I was panicking, but I was also excited to buy something new, as weird as that sounds. 
but then I found out the dimness had just somehow turned itself down. So I didn't need to buy a new laptop. But in that moment, I was like, I can buy a new laptop. I wonder what color I can get. Where can I get it from? Can I get it refurbished? Would that be cheaper than buying it brand new? So I obviously still have this thought in my head that I want to always buy new. And I guess that's sort of everyone does. That's sort of how we've been programmed in, way, in a way from when we, when we grew up. So I think with capture wardrobes, you really need to think about what you actually need for your wardrobe. So say you love white t-shirts, buy white t-shirts. Say you love black pants, then buy black pants. If you find you're wearing them a lot, um, maybe you have a linen, a black pair of linen pants and you find they're always um, rubbing out on the thighs or the hem is always catching on something or something like that. Maybe you have a backup pair. So then you have sort of two pairs and then you can wear them on rotation. So instead of having one piece of every single thing, maybe you have two. So maybe two pairs of jeans and one's a little bit different. Maybe one is a high waist and one, maybe one is a low rise or one has a frayed edge. You don't need to restrict yourself. You sort of just need to figure out what works best for you in your lifestyle. And that does take a while. It's about really examining what you are wearing and how often you're wearing it. Maybe you could keep a little list in your diary. Like, you know, I wore this black T-shirt seven days in a row. You like wearing black t-shirts then. Can I please go to the next slide? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, yeah. Awesome. So borrowing. Now I know most of us are in lockdown, which is unfortunate, but there are still ways to borrow clothing. So obviously we, well, I used to share my wardrobe with my sisters when I lived with them. I no longer live with them, so I don't share my wardrobe. But I think if we have a friend who is the same size and similar shape or has the same style to us, then share wardrobes. We don't need to own things anymore. I would happily share my wardrobe with anyone who was the same size as me and who lived in, you know, near me. I'd happily lend out my clothing just to see how they style it. And it, it kind of builds a story on, their, on it as well. So say I've got this really amazing dress that I wear once every now and then then maybe I can lend it to someone and they can share their story into it. And then when they give it back, they're like, oh, I had such an amazing time in it. I did this, I did that. And then that dress sort of has a story and it feels good when I put it on the next time. Kind of like when you borrow a book from a library, you wonder how many other people have sort of read it before you and what knowledge they've gained from it. And then you can obviously rent your clothing. So there's Glam Corner plus like 10 million other ones as well. Um, I think renting clothing is sometimes held for special occasions, which is fantastic. I certainly wouldn't want, you know, like that movie 27 dresses, 10 million bridesmaids dresses in my wardrobe cluttering it up. I would rather either own just one that I wear all the time and can be multi-purpose or I'd rent something from someone or somewhere, a business. So, you know, this is not just limited to these two options. These are just the ones I thought of top of my head. But if you think about borrowing your clothing from someone or somewhere, think about how you can share your story into it and what you can tell the person who you borrowed it off, what you can sort of experience with them. I think it's a really nice way to sort of get that sharing economy going. Next slide, please. And swapping, I love swapping clothing. Um, the clothing exchange used to exist and we used to do swapping parties. Um, unfortunately now because of COVID, it has sort of taken a little bit of a pause, but hopefully that can be back up and running in the next few years. But it's so nice. I remember when I used to take my clothing to the clothing exchange, and someone would pick it up and I'd be like, oh, that's the thing I used to wear and I used to love it so much, but it no longer fits me. Or I got this from an op shop and I went op shopping with my friends and I just don't wear it anymore. I really would like to see how you style it. Can you send me some pictures when you're styling it? Or someone's wearing, you know, your linen shirt that you used to love, but you just no longer wear it anymore. And then you can be like, oh, I used to wear it like this. And they'll be like, that feels so nice. I never thought of wearing it like that. So it's all about, again, that sharing economy and really opening your eyes to different ways to style things and sort of different styles that people have. So they may not always wear black and white like me. They could access accessorize a plain white shirt with some really bright fuchsia red pants or something and a really high heel and just bring life back into it. And then again, there's a swap party. So when we can you know, meet again, it'd be cool to have a little swap party and sort of you know bring along some tea or wine or whatever you want to drink and just swap clothes and just share their stories. So I work at Mutual Muse, which is a consignment store. And when people bring in their clothes, I like it when they tell me a story. There was one lady yesterday who said that a jumper 
was her husband's and he bought it in the UK and it just sort of she shared the story with me and it made me feel really good about sort of adopting this jumper in a way and then whenever whoever buys it next I want to share that story with them so again it's like you know borrowing book from the library and wondering what knowledge they have absorbed it's just about thinking about what story the clothing has held before us and then again swap with friends so share someone's wardrobe I think it's just a really nice way to sort of let our clothing get the extra mile next slide please and thrifting and op shopping. Oh, I wish I could go back to the op shop soon. So as I said before, I work at Mitchell Muse, which is just in Thornbury um, or on Sydney Road. So I see a lot of clothing come and go. I love it. And it's a great way to keep clothing in the loop. As I said before, I like sharing the stories. So with a consignment store, such as Mitchell Muse, Goodbyes, Yarn Yons or Swap, you can bring in your clothing and we buy it off you for cash or store credit. Depends on the place you go. Um, the ones I mentioned are all in Melbourne. I think there are a few around Australia, but these are the ones I see the most. So it's a good way to get an, a little bit extra money for your clothing. The only thing with consignment stores is they are picky because they have to sell it onwards. So I know with us, we won't take anything that's fast fashion or wholly, you know, full of holes because we can't sell it on. We're a business essentially. We're not an op shop. So I do think that encourages people to buy smarter. Because if you buy something from a fast fashion shop and you don't think about where it can go once you finish with it, it will probably just go to the you know landfill or the op shop and then they'll eventually throw it out. But if you buy something that you really, really love, but in the end it's just not for your style, but it was a higher priced item, you know, maybe it was something from, I don't know, I don't think Lois Hazel, we'll go with Lois Hazel. Maybe it was something from the designer Lois Hazel or another designer piece from Acne or something really expensive and really well made then you've got a chance to sell it on. Sure, you may not get exactly what you paid for it, but you know it's going to a good home and you know that someone is searching for that piece as well. I've had so many stories in store that are like, oh, I've been looking for these jeans forever. I'm so happy they fit me. And I love to see the smile on people's faces and their eyes light up when they find the right piece. And then of course, you know, the op shops aren't open at the moment, but you've always got eBay, Gumtree, Depop, Etsy and Instagram sellers to rely on. I think um, it's a little bit trickier because I can't feel the fabrics and I can't hold the item up to see how it looks against me or even try it on to see if it was fit. But you can always ask these people questions, you know, what are the waist measurements, you know, how long is it, what colour is it, um, what is the actual colour of it, what is the fabric? So start asking questions and really think about before you, you know, jump in and buy these sort of items. Vintage stores when they're back open, again, all this clothing tells a story. I love going to vintage shops and feeling all the clothing. Um, op shops when they're open again sort of the same thing I like feeling the clothing and wondering what story it's told I mean just an example these are the, some of the things I've found at um, various op shops I found a $10 Gucci bag $10 Burberry pants a $20 uh, Christian Dior vintage suit and I also found a $4 jacket that someone told me looks like Burberry so I'm not angry about that if I'd have bought all those things brand new, I think my wallet would be very, very sad. So, of course, op shopping is an obvious one, but I also encourage you to really think of when you're op shopping because I know I get carried away. I'm like, do I need four more linen shirts? Of course I do. Let's put them in the cart. So, again, I think that slow fashion is just that it's slow. So, really, do you need four linen shirts? Really think about how you can wear them and what you can pair them back with in your wardrobe. And do you have something that's really similar? Think about before you buy from anywhere. Next slide, please. Mm. <coughs> Sorry. Um, someone just commented that they said Erin Aaron Louise Fitzgerald. I love Erin. Modern Mending. She has an amazing book that is talking a bit about mending, and I have the book on my bookshelf. But she got, talks about all the mending styles and how to mend anything and how to mend the little holes in your socks. I just think thinking about our clothing in terms of mending before we throw it out is a really good way to keep something going. I had a bunch of tea, chat, tea towels that I was like, oh, they look a bit grubby. I might get rid of them. And I was like, no, no, not yet. I'm going to dye them. So I dyed my tea towels black and I'm actually in love with my tea towels now. I feel really happy that I kept something out of waste and I kept something in circulation. Sure, they look a bit faded, but they're fine. They're tea towels. I don't, you know, put them on display or wear them around the house, wear them, wear them out in the yard. So making clothing. I love anyone who can make clothing. I am a big fan of you. I cannot make clothing. I have tried, but I'm not patient enough. 
I can mend it, but I can't make it. I can alter it a little bit, but I can't make it. So if making clothing is something that really interests you, there are many places you can learn how to sew, sew just in Melbourne alone. And you can even use YouTube as a great resource. I use YouTube to help me learn how to knit properly. Sure, I can only knit in one straight line and it goes like up and down and up and down and there's lots of holes in it. But I'm doing something and it feels good to sort of be making a very holy scarf. And I also think you can embellish your clothing. So say you feel your shirt's a little bit plain or maybe there's a little bit of a bleach stain here. Can you add a little badge or a little pin or something over it to make it feel a bit better and make it feel a bit you? you. You're adding personality into your clothing and there's not going to be anything like it around, which really gives you, I guess, a one-up in the star world. And again, can you alter your clothing? I had a pair of jeans and they were too long. I'm sure I could have gotten them altered, but I wanted to cut them. I wanted to create a raw hem. So I just cut them and now I actually love them and wear them all the time. I just wanted that difference and I wanted to inject a bit of my personality into these jeans. So I just cut the hem, stitch around the about a centimetre from the top and I'm going to let it fray. So it looks really cool and it adds a little bit more to my style. So making is a bit more of a tough one, but if you can make your clothing, then that's amazing. Next slide, please. And the last thing, I guess, at the tip of the triangle is buying. I know we're all in lockdown and we look at things. Well, I look at things. I'm like, oh, I'd like to buy that. I'd like to buy that. To, maybe I need, you know, some more jumpers. Maybe I need another linen skirt. But then I stop and I close the app or the website and go, no, I do not need it. And I come to my wardrobe and I look at all the good things I already have. And I think about ways that I can wear them. And I think about ways that I can wear them when we're out of lockdown and how good it will feel to be wearing the clothes I already own, the clothes I love already. I don't want to replace them. So why should I keep filling up my wardrobe with things that I don't really need? But when I do buy new, when I have to, I support ethical brands. I try my hardest to support ethical brands. I try and buy less. I try and support local. I definitely don't buy fast fashion anymore. I ask brands questions. So for instance, I found some really cute jumpers made from orga organic cotton online. I was like, oh, I really like those. That's exactly what I've been searching for. But I couldn't find any certifications on their website about how they made their item, their clothing, or you know, exactly organic, what exactly organic cotton it was. So I asked them, I just said, hey, where is your clothing made? Can you tell me a bit more about the organic status of the clothing? And they replied back. It took a little while, but they replied back. And I was really happy with their answer. So I went ahead and bought the clothing. So I felt that because I dug a little bit deeper. I made a good choice, but I also made the person who runs the brand think a little bit more about what they should put on their website and how they can make their clothing. You know, if they've got the ethical things already there, why aren't they telling people about it? I mean, in my ideal world, there wouldn't be sustainable or fast fashion. It would just be fashion. Everything would be fashion, but everything would be made correctly and there would be, you know, people not working in terrible situations. <clears throat> everything would be fair. But this is where we're at this point in time. But I really think we have the power to change people's minds about what they buy, make people think a little bit. I don't know if anyone has seen the um, foreign correspondent, I think it was called Dead Man's Clothes or Dead White Man's Clothes. And it was all about the clothing in, sorry, it was all about the clothing in Gander. Was it Gander? I've forgotten the name of the country now it's totally gone anyway it was all about the clothing that we send overseas to be sold and how bad quality it was and what happened to it over there it's basically piled into a big pile and it's burnt most of the time but we're sending our clothing that is stained and ripped and torn overseas for other people to wear that doesn't seem really fair so the thing with fashion is that it harms sometimes harms from beginning right to the end which is not very fair so I want us to think a little bit more about where our clothing comes from and how we can support these people are making the correct choice. Then once it's in our wardrobe, I want it to, us to care for the clothing like the good friends they are. I don't want us to throw away clothing because it no longer fits. I want us to give clothing to people who need clothing or give it to a friend who could wear it better. I want us to care for it and really think about where the clothing will go once we've finished it with it. And then when we are finished with it, is it too tatty to pass on to someone else? Well, don't donate it to the op shop because it won't go to the right place. Is there a way you can upcycle it or downcycle it? Can you mend it? Can it go to something else? Can you turn it into a bag or a cool skirt or a cool top or chop it in half and it's a two set? I think think outside the box with the items you already own. 
I even tried once, it didn't work, but I tried to unravel a jumper so I could knit a scarf. Unfortunately, the jumper was made in a way I couldn't unravel it, but it was fun trying and I learned a thing or two. But yeah, just as um, it popped up on the screen there, Good On You is a really great, great platform to see if a brand is a good, a good, what do you call it? A good thing or not. So if you go in there and you type in the brand you're, you want to support, maybe say for example, it's Cos. A lot of people don't know, Cos is actually owned by H&M. So they're not as ethical as they seem. Sure, when you go in the store, there's like four things on the rails and you're like, oh, this is so pretty and ethical, but it's not. I work for Cos, I know the back behind the scenes. It's actually owned by H&M. So if, you know, if you've seen the H&M store, you can sort of envision the way their clothing is made. Now, I don't want to say never buy from fast fashion. I just want to say try your best not to. But if you have to, email the brand and say, hey, I like shopping from your store because I can find everything I need. But what I'd really like is to see you pay a bit more attention to your workers. I'd like to see you make less clothing. I'd like you see, to see organic cotton in more of your range. What do you want to see from them? Tell them. Just tell them. And the more people that tell them these things, the more they'll change their stance on their manufacturing. Next slide, please. And again, do you really need it? I feel like I should tatter this on my head sometimes because I swear when I'm working at work and I'm the only one there because we're closed and it's a really cool pair of pants that I've just tried on, do I really need those pants when I have some in my wardrobe already? I usually put them out the back and wear a little bit, so it's okay. <laughs> and then I usually don't need them at all. <clears throat> But I want you to ask yourself, can I wear this with three other items to create more looks? So can those pants go with three different tops? And then can you layer a jacket on top? Can that top go with this jacket? Can it go with those pants? Will it look good with those shoes? How would the entire outfit look? Can you care for it? Are you buying silk items when you don't have time to dry clean? Are you buying, you know, wool when you don't know how to look, for, look after it? Read the care label and really get in touch with how the garment with whatever fabric the garment is made from. Because if you're throwing wool in the washing machine, there's a good chance it'll shrink. Same with silk, they're very, very, they're fabrics that must be cared for properly. And would I buy this full price is one that always gets me. When I see things on sale, I want those things. It's like some sort of little gremlin is on my shoulder going, bye, 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 bye. I don't need the thing. I need a good little angel on the other shoulder to tell me not to buy. So if you see something on sale, and it's something you're not looking for. You just stumbled across it and you're like, oh, I like those shoes. They're 50% off. And then your little brain starts thinking, do I need it? Do I need it? Do I need it? Stop. Put them out of your cart or put them down. Think about what they can go with. Think about how much they would have been. Now, if you're looking for a pair of shoes and they're on sale and you've been looking for six months or so, this is probably the sign you need to buy the shoes because you've been looking for a while and you need new shoes. Just really weigh up whether you need something or not. Can I rent, borrow, find this secondhand? The majority of the time when I wanted something, I found it secondhand. I've looked, I mean, a second a while, and I've waited. I once wanted a really cool pair of sunglasses, and I went to all these fast fashion shops, or not fast fashion, like Bailey Nelson and all sort of these shops, and I tried all these sunglasses on, but I just couldn't bring myself to buy it brand new. And then when we came back from work break, the first thing that came in was the sunglasses I wanted. I feel like I manifested them. So really thinking about if you want something and really looking around till you do find it. I mean, there's some things you will need urgently and that's fine, but I didn't need these sunglasses urgently. I had another pair, but I just wanted to update this sort of look and the other ones had started to get a bit bendy. But I feel like I manifested this pair of sunglasses and I got really excited about these sunglasses. So yeah, really look around before you do buy new. Where are you buying from? Where are you buying this from and who are you supporting? Is it something that aligns with your value? Is it fair trade or organic or vegan? Whatever your value is, really get in tune with them and figure out if what you're buying is what you what actually aligns with those values. Sorry, I'm losing my voice today. Next slide, please. So this is a little bit of a challenge. What is one step you are going to make you are going to implement in your lifestyle to make it more sustainable? I think for me personally, I'm going to stop looking for things. I have a really great wardrobe and I really love it. So I'm going to stop searching for the things that I think I need just to be, you know, a cool fashion stylist or whatever. I'm going to be happy with the items that I already have and I'm going to wear them to death. And then when I no longer like them, I will sell them or pass them on to a friend. 
So maybe, you know, you could buy less or you could mend your clothing or write to brands and ask them about their garment workers or maybe support somewhere like Pay Up, who's asking brands to pay up from, um, they're asking brands to pay up from when they didn't pay their orders during the first year of the COVID crisis. A lot of brands didn't actually pay their completed orders, so it left a lot of factories in limbo and a lot of factories without, couldn't, they couldn't pay their garment workers. So maybe support an organisation like Pay Up. Maybe you're just going to, you know, watch some YouTube videos or just read up a little bit. I sort of, you don't need to tell me what your challenge is. I sort of want you to write it down and think a little bit about it. And then maybe refer back to, think about these slides and think about how you could maybe implement that into your wardrobe. It doesn't happen overnight. Like, you know, my wardrobe has taken me quite a few years to get to where it is and to where I'm happy at this point. And of course, my lifestyle may change and my body shape may change, but I'm thinking about how I can keep my wardrobe as ethical as possible, how I can keep my fashion footprint low, but how also how I can help people really, you know, embrace the slow fashion lifestyle as well. Next slide, please. And here's some resources. These are ones that I found really, really helped me. It's a sort of a list of all different things. There's, I mean, there's 10 million more out there. There we go. I've got the good on, good on you app right there as well. But these are ones that have really helped me sort of find different things. And I'm always, I'm always reading books and I'm always digging and I'm always looking at slow fashion reports. Like just the other day, I think I read one on the Copenhagen Fashion Week and their festival and their sustainability efforts. And I was like, oh, come on, this is fantastic. Like, I want to see more fashion weeks doing this because fashion weeks are a big part of fashion and what's driving trends. And this one was quite a really good report about sustainability. So it was really interesting to read it and to see what they're doing, like, you know, banning plastic bottles and then also making the brands think about where their clothing comes from and if it, you know, they're reusing organic, using organic fabrics or reusing you know, recycled cotton, like that sort of thing. They're really pushing brands to do that. So and this is, I mean, I'm deeply invested in this stuff if you haven't figured out that out by now. Like all the books beside my bedside table are about sustainable fashion. So this is what I live and breathe. Sure, fashion may not be a big thing for you and that's totally fine. It doesn't have to be. As long as you're really considerate about where your clothing comes from and then goes towards in the end. Next slide, please. And this is a little bit about where you can find me. So Ironic Minimalist on Instagram. And you can email me with any questions. And I'm also a stylist that will eventually come to your house and help you with your wardrobe. Um, I'm not one that will make you buy new things or make you throw out everything. I just want to help you build a really nice wardrobe for your lifestyle. And I've got the website ironicminimalist.com. So I think we can go to some questions now. If we'd like to flash them on the screen, that'd be great. Tamara, hello. Thank you. Thank you, Jenna. That was absolutely fantastic. Thank you. So let's look at some questions. Yes, please. Uh, do, do, do. What's this one? Um, I have a friend who's been, oh, brilliant. Yes, cool. that is a great way to start fashion from source. I've heard someone, um, I've heard of someone doing this with like um, dog's fur. And they made like oh yeah samoids yeah so you have to yeah. mix it with wool so you mix the dog hair with the wool and you get really good warm stuff oh really that's so cool I mean yeah. that's like the ultimate of making your own clothing isn't it <laughs> yeah so yes as some of the zero waste people know I have a jacket I wear in my studio which is um, fifty percent samoid dog and fifty percent wool and it's <laughs> so warm that I had to take the sleeves off it. Because it was, <laughs> I put in too much samoid, so yeah, lots of fun. Uh, let's watch this one. This is one question I ask myself when buying a new piece, is this better than the one I already have? This works for me most of the time, avoiding unnecessary impulse buy. Fantastic. Yes. That so is a true. fantastic question. So good. I love it. Um, okay, let's see what else we've got. Oh, there's the Action Age. Um, oh, has anyone got any questions out there? My big thing is to try and get people to mend their items. I think it's so important. And, you know, the wonderful thing about having clothes, you don't, if you don't like what you've got or it's gone out of fashion, try reconstructing it, pull it apart, put it together with something else. Because sometimes, you know, you can have two things and they turn into one jumper or something and it can look just absolutely fantastic. Uh, what's this one? 
Do you have any other advice when you feel like you want to buy something, discouraging yourself in the moment? Um, I have a wallpaper on my laptop that says a goal. So when I'm online shopping, I see that wallpaper and I think, is what I'm about to buy going to contribute to that goal? So at the moment, it's a quite a really a lofty goal, but I think I'm going to have to change it. It says um, a house in rural Victoria, which is a very lofty goal, I know. But I think if I buy this piece of clothing that's, you know, full price or secondhand, is it going to contribute to me getting that goal? So my other goal was I wanted to get myself a tailored suit, which I achieved, and I got myself a tailored suit that I know I wear all the time. But I stopped, I slowed down my purchasing right down and thought about if I buy this piece, will I get my tailored suit? Like I probably will in the end, but it's going to take longer. So I really thought about what I was buying. And even like a chocolate bar, I was like, do I need this chocolate bar if I want this suit? So I set myself a goal. And you can do it for anything. could be like, you know, if you just want a, a really good book, you know, is this $4 top worth getting instead of this really good book that I want? So setting yourself goals I find really helps. And the other one I'd recommend is if you see it, go away, come back tomorrow. Because often overnight you'll think, oh, I don't really need that. Definitely. So definitely. what else have we got here? How do you do the wardrobe review? Oh, Jenna, that's definitely you. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a little bit hard to describe because it's quite, it really depends on the person. But um, I guess for me, um, maybe seasonally I go through my wardrobe and I take it all out. Everything comes out. I put it on the bed and I pick up one piece by one and say, do I really like this? Have I worn this a lot? Um, is there a reason I'm not wearing it? Is the colour the wrong colour? Is the fabric the wrong fabric? And I really think about this piece long and hard and decide if it deserves to go back into my wardrobe. If it doesn't, then, you know, I find the right way to pass it on. Um, and if it does go back into the wardrobe, then I really think about what I can pair it with as well. I, I'm very, very critical of what goes in my wardrobe. Um, but I also turn the hangers around the wrong way. So when an item is in my wardrobe, this is new with tags, I'm sorry. Um, they sit, you know, on the rail like this. But when something new comes into my wardrobe, I turn it around like this or I do this every sort of season and then it goes backwards in the wardrobe. And then say like after three months or six months or something, if this is still around the wrong way, then I didn't wear it. Why didn't I wear it? Is it time to go? So really thinking about what you actually do wear in your wardrobe is really critical. And this is a very true comment um, about wool. Wool is brilliantly mendable. I mean, that is a wonderful thing about it. You can needle felt it. Uh, you can darn it. There are so many things. The issue I think was more that Jenna was mentioning was more about the washing. Just be careful. If you throw it in a hot wash, mm -hmm. it'll come out like a baby size. <laughs> Yeah. I have we have lots of jumpers at work that people try to sell us because they've shrunk them in the wash. You can get them back to the right size, but with a lot of patience. Um, but we can't sell jumpers that are shrunk, unfortunately. So it's best to be careful with what you wash. Even with the cotton top, my washing machine is turning everything black at the moment. So I don't want to put any whites in there. I don't know what's wrong with my washing machine. But yeah, um, really thinking about how you wash your garments makes them live longer as well. Yeah, and there's. Um what's this one do you do you rec recommend trying a buy nothing new year oh definitely yes um, i did that last year and i'm sure jenna's done it multiple times and i wouldn't i wouldn't say just one year do it many times it's basically suddenly you realize that you've got all this stuff in the back of the wardrobe that you haven't looked at um and it, it also makes you rejig things you know, you look at things, see if they need mending, repair, that sort of thing. So, yeah, definitely. I, I have actually haven't done a buy nothing new year as a lot of my stuff is secondhand and I work in a consignment store. Mm -hmm. um, but because when we've been forced into lockdown, I couldn't op shop. And that really, that first year I was, I had these like withdrawals and I like was like always browsing on eBay. But then I become, came to the realisation that, I had the things I wanted already. Why was I looking for things that I needed brand new? Um, so I just slowed down my shopping habits. And I mean, I was forced into it, but 
you can slow down your shopping habits, but it does take a while to change, I found. Yeah. Well, yeah, so I'm, I'm on my, I think it's my fourth year now. I have bought one new item in four years. Um, and other than underwear, I do, I, I, <laughs> I don't go there. I do definitely buy new underwear. But, you know, as the um, mended Aussie will tell you, you like, uh, yeah, they make, she makes her own. It's fantastic. Um, out of old T-shirts and things. So, you know, you can do that too. Oh, that is so cool. What's this one? Um, how, slow, how to slow fashion in low socioeconomic group areas? I mean, do you want to? Did you want to say something? Oh, go for it. I mean, this is the thing. Like, I can talk all day about buying something from this certain place and supporting this certain person, but at the end of the day, if you can't do that, that's fine. I spoke to a crowd once, and this woman said that she couldn't afford to buy, you know, fashion at all. So what she did was she sort of decided on a capture wardrobe, a uniform, I guess, and she went to Target and she bought the six white linen shirts or whatever she wanted to buy, and that was her for the rest of the year. And I was like, okay, that's the way you want to do it, then go for it. Off shopping is another really great resource as this comment has just appeared. Yep. Um, I think the only issue with op shopping is that some people hate op shopping and or they want something now and now. I guess it's really, for me, it was really a mind shift, a mind change. So I was always fast fashion, had to buy it now, had to get it now, and then I had to shift my mindset to searching. I mean, I'm very particular with my wardrobe, so I have to always search for things or what I want in my wardrobe. Like, you know, it has to be certain shape, certain colour, certain size, certain fabric, whereas people probably aren't as picky as me. But I think it's all about finding your values and what you align with and doing the best you can. No one's going to yell at you if you couldn't afford the $400 jumper that was made from organic cotton that was, you know, made by fairy hands. You know, no one's going to yell at you. Doing the best you can, I think, is the best way to participate in a sort of a slow fashion economy and mending, of course. And I think the other thing that's happening now is, you know, tw going back 10 years or so, uh, charities would always sort all their things that came into their shops and put the better things in the higher socioeconomic areas because they could get more money from them. A lot of charities have stopped doing that now. They're actually sending the better stuff to the lower socioeconomic areas because they're real and, and selling them at a proper, you know, at an affordable price. Um, and the thing about op shopping is it, it comes down to regular. You have to go mm -hmm. regularly and. Yes. Because yes. you just don't know when something's going to come yes. in. So exactly. it's getting into a habit of browsing yes. just as, you know, many people every Saturday when we're not in lockdown <laughs> will go off to the um, you know, shopping centre. Um, you know, the Salvos on a Monday, Tuesday always have $2 items because it's yes. whatever colour's going out. So there's lots of things you can do around areas um, and there's just so, so many great opportunities now. There are. Um, although I do find that Savers on Sydney Road, they have priced their items up a lot. I generally yeah. try to avoid Savers. Like I've got a, a Glassons, a Glassons fast fashion vest thing with like pulls on the front that I can fix. But this was thirteen dollars, and I've thrifted a cooler vest than this for five dollars. So <clears throat> it's all about where you go as well. Yeah, Definitely. and yeah. and some you know the thing that people don't realize is Savers isn't actually a charity shop. Yeah. It's it's actually um, it's a it's a for profit. It does lots of great things, but they are not a charity shop, um, yeah. and so they price up to pay employees and everything else. So yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I'm just seeing if there's any other question. I've been what's this one? I've been repurposing. Dead disposable oh. masks. What? Oh, brilliant idea. Whoa. Oh, cool. Perfect. Yeah. I and love and that is the thing, you know, when you get your clothing, one of the things you will notice you wear them in certain places. So you've got a beautiful linen shirt, and over time it will wear under the arms and generally around the neck. Mm. Uh, sometimes some people will also wear it in the middle of the back where it's rubbing on the chair. Mm. But the rest of the fabric's really good. So yeah. use it, you know, make your own masks, as that, as that person just has suggested, which is a fantastic idea. Um, turn it into, you know, the, the worn soft cloth, fantastic for rags. 
if you go back a generation or two, your parents or your grandparents would have always had a rag bag and it was all yeah. those bits because they would take the buttons off the shirts so they could reuse them. They would cut down all the shirts, you know, turn collars because uh, often in men's work shirts, the collars would go first, yes. which is now everybody. Uh, so you can turn your collars. There's so many things you can do that create things that, you know, you're not just throwing away. And always remember, if you wouldn't give it to your best friend, please don't give it to the charity shop. This is what I love. Do. This is what I love about you, Tamara. Like, you literally just listed off a whole heap of things you can do with, like, one or two shirts. Like, this is what I want to bring back. Like, you know, I love fashion and I love it, you know, trying different things. But I also don't want my fashion just to go to the bin or, you know, get disposed of in a bad way when I'm finished with it. I want to reuse it again. So, like, maybe this vest, I could sew a shirt underneath it or something when I'm finished yeah. with it. Or I could make it into a bag. I don't know. Who knows? I will think well, about yeah, it. Yeah, there's, there's all fantastic opportunities. So, you know, so you've got two woolen jumpers, maybe a grey and a black one. Yes. Um, they're both worn in different places. Cut them up and sew them back yes. together again. Yes. And if you throw them through the washing machine on a warm wash deliberately, they'll felt up. So even when you cut them, they won't come apart. Yes, exactly. Uh, lots of things, you know. Um, the other thing with textiles is your linen. So as you were saying earlier about your tea towels, when your sheets go in the middle, turn them, cut them in half and turn so the outsides come in and sew them back together again. Genius. You've got Genius. another life out of your sheets. Um, exactly. So, yeah, so many things you can do. Uh, now I'm just seeing up shops. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, I keep putting anything on. Um, okay, I'm, I'm loving your What's chat, ladies, but we can have one last question because we are pushing uh, the yeah, time. Well. But I'm, I want to keep listening to what you're saying. So it's it's always tough to come yeah. in and, and do this. Oh, it's okay. Well, I'll, why don't we go to the Sister Works video now and then there's another video with Mending. And we'll... Sister Works is a non-profit social enterprise based in Melbourne. We help women from migrant, refugee and asylum seeker backgrounds to settle in Australia. We function as a social enterprise through our retail store our brand line products are all handmade by our sisters through weekly production workshops. We share our profits with the sisters who engage in producing our sustainable range. We focus on products that can be reused, recycled or recycled, such as face masks and sanitary pads, encourage people to change their consumption habits into using products that are less harmful to the environment. At Sister Works, we strive to build social and economic stability for our sisters while tackling climate change and environmental protection. Great, and then we can go. Well, do you have a favorite piece of clothing that is looking the worst for wear? Would you like to learn how to make the clothes you love last? Tamara from Karina Textiles teaches workshops that enable you to learn to repair and embellish your clothing, making them a delight to wear again. The workshops are designed to address the 6,000 kilograms of used but still wearable clothing that goes into Australian landfill every 10 minutes. By getting you to hold on to your clothes for at least nine months longer reduces your water, waste and carbon footprint by up to 30%. Mending is a great life skill which can save you money, save your clothes and reduce your impact on the environment. You can choose from a variety of workshops including visible mending, creating sashiko patches, darning, needle felting and more. Mending can become an opportunity for wonderful decoration as well as reducing the amount of clothing going to landfill. Tamara also has a selection of mending kits and supplies to assist you on your mending journey. Visit Karina.com. Cool. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, lovely, lovely videos um, there and, and lovely chat. I'd just like to ask a couple of quick questions. Um, J Tamara, that was, that was your video. You do mending workshops. Have you got mending workshops coming up soon? Uh, so at the moment, we haven't got any dates on them because we don't know when we're coming out of shutdown. 
I'm hoping to run one, well, there was supposed to be one next weekend, but that's not happening. So hopefully the end of September there'll be one, but if you keep an eye on my website, I'll be putting them up as soon as Dan lets us know what's happening. No worries. I know I know Zero Waste Victoria is looking at hosting some um, very yeah. soon for the, the same reasonings as well too. Um, but, but Jenna, um, I'm pretty sure you told me you've got a workshop coming up very soon if people want to continue this journey with you. Yeah, I sure have. Um, it's tomorrow night, actually, with Laneway Learning. So it's my first class with Laneway Learning, and I'm going to be talking about um, sort of things you can do, how to build a sustainable wardrobe, and things you can do are in lockdown to sort of achieve your sustainability goals with your wardrobe. So how can people book into this session? Oh, yeah. yeah, so on my Instagram, you can go to the little link. So Ironic Minimalist is my Instagram name. Um, or you can go to Laneway Learning and it's in their, on their website as well. Sorry. Um, and you just follow the links and you can book a ticket to come to the session. It's all online, obviously. Um, yeah. Excellent. Great. Thanks very much, Jenna. Thanks so much for your time. Um, pleasure to see you, see you again. Indeed. Thank you so much for having me. I hope everyone got some little tips from that one and I really, really enjoyed presenting to everyone and I feel so happy right now. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, Jenna. Bye for now. Thank you. See you all later. And while we've got Tamara here, I'd just like to say a big thank you to Tamara, who's been doing a lot of the tech um, and planning um, behind the scenes. Um, she's been a, a real uh, great asset to, to this event as well. Um, just very quickly before we uh, bring on the, the uh, council waste officers, um, I think there are people can still jump in if they're interested in the, um, the repair cafe. Can they still do that, Tamara? Yeah, so the, the repair cafe is on till four o'clock. If you go to Zero Waste, uh, the website, you will be able to, I'm just seeing if I've got it up here. Um, here we go, I'll put it, oh, so, sorry, someone's already done it. So, yeah, you can go to the zerowastevictoria.org website and the link is on the front page. If you've got any questions to ask the repair cafe people, or maybe you've got something you'd like to show them to fix, Please go there now. Great. Oh, Tamara, you're doing you. an amazing job. Thank you for putting that in writing. I'll send you words you put it in writing. Thank you. Thank you very much.